Hello, and thanks for watching this installment of Spotlight on Sparks. I'm your host, Adam Mayberry. And today, for this segment, we're talking about economic development and how important it is to create jobs in our state. And with us is none other than Governor Brian Sandoval. And we're honored to have the governor on the program today uh, from the great state of Nevada. Governor, thank you so much for coming on the program and spending some time to talk with us. Thank you for having me. Great to be back in Sparks. As our governor, I know economic development is extremely important to you. Um, you helped craft legislation, Assembly Bill 449, this last legislative session uh, that creates a government structure for economic development for our state. Uh, can you tell us uh, what the state's role is in economic development and, how, and what your vision is of economic development for our state? Sure, and economic development is my number one priority. I, mean, the, the, I think the solution for our state is jobs, jobs and more jobs, and to diversify our economy. We've always been a tourist-based economy and a gaming-based economy. I think it's extremely important that we capitalize on the resources that we have. Assembly Bill 449 was, is an important component of that. We're going to reconfigure the way the state of Nevada approaches economic development. The governor will now be the chairman of the Economic Development Authority Board. It's going to become a cabinet level position. That's something that was extremely important and was a priority for me because one of the legacies that I would like to have is to diversify our economy and bring more jobs here. Unfortunately, we lead the country in unemployment, which is not a statistic that I'm proud of. Things have been getting better. Uh, when I first stepped into office, it was about 14.8, 14.9 you know, on, the, on the higher side of that. It's getting down to about 12. You know, certainly, I'm not going to take credit for that, but I think what's my responsibility is, is to improve that. So you know, I, hopefully, I'm responding to your question, but you know, we worked extremely hard during the legislative session with legislative leadership. You know, a lot of credit has to go to Senate Majority Leader Stephen Horsford, with the Speaker John Asagara and the Minority Leadership Pete Gokachia and Mike McGinnis out in Fallon. We all worked and collaborated together to do this bill because that was one place where there was agreement that we need to work hard to bring companies to the state of Nevada, but also strengthen the companies that we have. I think it's really important, again, that um, we, you know, we have a lot of companies that we can be proud of and we have to create an environment where they can thrive. Governor, tell me what kind of role you envision that the local governments, like the city of Sparks, have in economic development. The Sparks is a community that I'm extremely proud of. I grew up there. I consider myself a, a son of Sparks, and they've accomplished a lot. And, and I'm proud of what the city of Sparks does in terms of economic development. But being responsive to your question, we have the Economic Development Authority of Western Nevada, EDON, is, is, the, is the acronym. I'm told there's going to be a merger with the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce. So when those two collaborate with regard to the new structure, we're going to have what's called a catalyst fund as part of Assembly Bill 449. That will be a fund of money so that when companies perhaps need some help to get over the line to come to the state of Nevada, that we'll be able to provide those funds to help them with those relocation costs. The local governments will have a very important role in all of that because they will be part of the, you know, the decision-making process and distribution of those funds. So the City of Sparks will be playing a very important role in all that. Governor, we've talked a lot about the public sector role in economic development. What's your vision of the private sector's role in economic development? Well, again, this is going to be a very big team effort. Local governments are going to have to be working with the, the private entities and, in, and the employers in, in the state to all make this happen. I've been reaching out to all a lot of different companies when I was campaigning. I visited over 100 businesses. I'm continuing to do that throughout the state of Nevada. Uh, there's a lot of good stories to tell. There are a lot of companies that are looking at uh, both northern and southern Nevada as places to, to do business. We have a very strong business environment. You know, the bad news is, is that we may have high unemployment rate, but we have a lot of available uh, people that can go to work immediately and we are also working on retraining some of those folks so that when we bring those those businesses in but I'm relying on the private sector to help us to get to where we need to be. Well despite some of the challenges that our state has faced uh, there's still a lot of hope on the horizon. Uh, there's distribution, uh, there's, there's clean energy, there's, there's still some uh, desire for manufacturers to come to Nevada. Um, what kind of incentives can the state provide 
uh, to those kinds of businesses to relocate and to, to be successful in our state. We are right now, and one of the first things that we did after the passages of Assembly Bill 449, which is that bill that remade uh, economic development, was to have a fund of money, I believe it's close to a million dollars, and we've hired who, what is called the Brookings Institute to do a study. And so that study is occurring right now. They're going to determine where we, what the clusters are, where Nevada can capitalize on our resources, where we're strong already so that we can focus our efforts on those groups. There's going to be a meeting that occurs on July 25th, so only a few weeks ago, where Brookings is going to tell us what their preliminary findings are. What's good for Sparks may not necessarily be good for what's good for Henderson or Tonopah or all the different communities throughout the state, so that that's going to set the, the template or the direction as to where economic development is going to go. Well, Governor, to conclude our conversation, let me ask you, what do you think makes Sparks so special and a good place to do business? Business. Well, where do I start? I mean, I, I think Sparks is a wonderful community. My brother uh, lives in the city of Sparks. He, he lives out in Wingfield Springs. It has a very high quality of life. So I think that's something that I talk about when, when companies here and talk about uh, the quality of life that we have both in Reno and Sparks, but particularly in Sparks with the ball fields and the schools that you, you have there, the opportunities for shopping, the opportunities for, for recreation, the quality of the local government. I think those are all things that um, you can tell a great story that Sparks is a wonderful place to do business and call home. Governor Sandoval, thank you so much for coming on Spotlight on Sparks. We're very appreciative of your time and our viewers appreciate seeing you. I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and Adam, thank you for, for having me here. As I said, I'm very proud of Sparks and I tell everybody that it was a, a great place to grow up and I think other families are, are finding that out and the people that are, are going to come here are going to say you know, that, that Sparks is a is a great, great community and has a lot of opportunity. Uh, you know, the, the parks and, and all the things that I've talked about today make it a wonderful, wonderful place to live. There's more Spotlight on Sparks coming up right after this. You know, in tough times like these, the best thing that local governments can do to encourage a growing economy is to cultivate a climate that is friendly to business. Well, you know, the economy is our biggest uh, enemy right now. Uh, getting people back to work, um, getting them to be able to put food on their tables and, and take care of their families. It, that's, that's tough nationwide, not just here in Sparks. So I, I think one of the priorities we have to have is, is getting people back to work. No matter how we do that, we get people back to work. To get people back to work, we need jobs. Yes, the trickle-down theory, you know, still works. That, you know, if you're building houses, that means we have jobs. We have construction jobs. Then that they buy groceries, and they buy cars, and they buy houses. And so it's, you know, that whole cycle. More so than ever, um, we face the need to grow. And fortunately, we have the land, the infrastructure, and the workforce to make that a reality. City government creates jobs by enticing businesses to set up shop in Sparks. Because our atmosphere here, as far as businesses goes, is a lot better than California and a lot better than Oregon. So that's what I'm going to be concentrating on. And that is I'm going to probably have to you know, be a salesman for the city of Sparks and get some business parks here. Because you get a business park here, we get, first of all, the, the jobs that we need. I mean, it's our responsibility to develop our city, to develop the type of industry we want to be here and what we want the city to look like in the next century. Right now, the, the focus really, really needs to be on getting our people back to work, bringing businesses here. Ideas abound for how we might diversify the local economy. Open air event center. If we can bring in uh, high tech development or, uh, or, or uh, biotech, things like that. And we start building up Kylie again. Our revenues, about 90% of the time, are generated by private activity. So when people are in our economy fully employed, um, we're going to see more revenues. When we have growth occurring, we're going to see more revenues. When we have a healthy community where our businesses are growing and prospering, we're going to have revenues that will uh, provide us the basis to provide the services that people have come to expect in Sparks, and that's why um, we say uh, it makes a difference to live in Sparks. Even the city leaders work to bring new businesses to town and build our fiscal future. They also continue to nurture and grow the special events industry. Escape Sparks, it's branding slogan. Sparks, it's happening here.
I think everybody really understands today how critical special events are to our economy, to bringing tourists to the region, to making sparks on the map. And so we are really looking at what improvements can we make that help accelerate and improve the special events environment in Victorian Square. It's been our, in the history of who we are, special events. Uh, we've done a great job with the Legends Project, bringing that on in and bringing more tourists to our area for, for shopping. We need to continue those themes, continue looking at all the things that are going to increase tourism and the importation of tax dollars, tax dollars from other communities. Um, that's the lifeblood of who we are. The newest member of the Spark City Council, Ed Lawson, serves the people's business by smoothing the way for new business. Uh, Councilman Lawson, we want to take this opportunity just to find out a little bit about what piqued your interest uh, to run as a uh, member of the City Council. Well, um, the biggest part was that I've been involved uh, with the governments through YESCO as a, on the Government Relations Committee. So I've gotten to speak with you know, lots of different entities, governmental entities, and help rewrite sign codes and, and whatnot for the different uh, places. And I was also the spokesman for the billboard industry in the early 2000s uh, and just decided that it was just time that I put my money where my mouth was and, and, and go out and make something happen. And quite frankly, I think we need more people like me, that uh, citizen legislators legislators that they go out there and, and you know take time away from their business to, to make a difference for their city. Well one of the big issues for me and, and because we see it here at Yesco daily is uh, the permitting process and with the cuts that we've had to make and it's very understandable that the process would take longer to get through but it's it's a customer service issue when you really think about it the city of Sparks is no different than any other business our customers are citizens and we need to treat them that way. And, and I think we have great people at the City of Sparks. But uh, my main focus right now is to, to improve that permit turn time and make it easier to do business in the City of Sparks. Uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, about yourself, about your job, what uh, the history of your, of your professional life and how you came into uh, working with Yesco. Well, I grew up in Las Vegas. My dad uh, moved there, moved the family there. Uh, when I was four years old. And so I grew up in Las Vegas. Uh, lucky enough that I got a full ride football scholarship to Colorado State. And I went to school at Colorado State where I met my wife. We got married in 1983. And we have two boys, one's 25 and one's 22 now. And uh, both of them attend the University of Nevada. And been married to my lovely wife, Diane, for the 28 years. Very much love to hunt, as yeah. you know. Uh, that's one of my favorite things. Chucker hunting, big game hunting, anything that gets me outside. Uh, my wife and I love to camp. Basically, I started to work for Yesco in 1997, and uh, I've, I've always been a salesman my whole life. So, you know, it's right out of college, I was selling uh, insurance, and, and I worked for Motorola, for the factory uh, at Motorola for, I don't know, the rest of my life, and then I came here. And so I really only had one kind of a job, but only three different products that I've sold. But the thing that's most interesting about this is I get to work with business people every day and I'm branding their business and I'm helping them to make, to call attention to their business. And there's a lot that goes into that. And then all these wonderful people we get to work with here at Yesco. We have, you know, some 85 employees right here in this area, in this building. Right in Sparks. Right here. Yep. So we're a big major employer. Well, this is the spring of 2011. Uh, at this point in, in, in time, do you see a, an uptick in the, uh, the business here regionally? Any, any general perspectives that you can offer? You know, I, I wish I could say we do. Uh, I don't see, I mean, we see little glimmers of hope okay. here and there but I don't think we're quite, quite at the bottom. We're very close, in my opinion. We're very close. However, I don't think we've quite, quite gotten there. Um, you know, it's, we're a front-end type business in the sign business. So people are opening businesses 
you know, we're, we're the ones that get the mom and pop signs. We're the ones that deal with the casino. So we are a pretty good leading economic indicator as uh, those businesses start making changes and moves and opening, you know, we're, we're going to see that. And, you know, we're still not seeing that activity as, as much as we'd like to. There's some, but it's not, you know, we're not, we're not at the bottom, let's say. You know, we get to see it from right from the creative part where you take a little piece of paper and then I hold it up to you and you say, is that what you wanted, Adam? And you say, yep, that's what I want. So then we take it back. We then turn that flat piece of paper into a 3D object and put it up on the wall. And so hopefully when we're done with the process, I come back to you and say, hold that picture up and look at the sign on the wall and say, is that what you wanted? And you say, absolutely. Well, basically everything is kind of segmented up to the different parts of the sign. And you, you touched on sheet metal. <laughs> sheet metal and uh, welding and all that kind of happens in the back part of the shop and the painting is back there also because you want to get your paint on at that time and then as the sign moves forward it comes to the electrical department and to the plex department where it gets its faces and you know put on it and then everything gets moved to the back again and goes out and gets put on the wall that's a very very satisfying way to do business because everyone's happy when you're done When a new business sets up shop in Sparks, the first stop is often the city's community services department. Director Neil Cruz explains what draws these businesses. There are a couple of things that, that we as the city really play a key role in in terms of economic development. And I think first and foremost, that's a quality of life. I think that is a huge part of the decision for any business to decide to relocate to or, or from an area is the quality of life of, of where they're potentially going. The Legends at Sparks Marina is an example of how the city government sells its location to the business community. The task is worthwhile to bring commerce and jobs to town. But local government is far from alone in its economic development efforts. Well again, I, I think the, the, the public sector is always going to be involved just on a day-to-day -day basis when we're talking with developers and those kind of things. And really I, I, I see four tiers of economic development, um, three of them in the government and one in private sector. You know, it, it is that, that private sector mentality, that business vibrancy in a community that is driven by the private sector. They play a strong role in Sparks and in Northern Nevada as a whole, and they need to continue to do that. Uh, the private sector is still going to be involved with uh, some of the agencies like EDON and those kind of things. So uh, they're going to uh, still be members of those particular uh, agencies and, uh, you know, put money into those agencies and work on economic development. So. I think as a, as a partnership, it'll be uh, much stronger. And we look forward to continuing to partner with them in doing that. And then on the, on the governmental side, I really see three tiers. Uh, certainly there's been a lot of activity, you know, from the governor's office, from the legislature with the AB 449, um, that's gonna provide some, some money um, to, to drive economic development, to plow into business investment within our state, and, uh, and to allow for some tax breaks within our state where it makes sense. And, and that's, you know, the legislature's role is appropriate there. And I think that is a key component uh, to economic development in, Northern, in Nevada as a whole and certainly within Northern Nevada. The second tier under that I think is a regional effort. We need to have Reno, Sparks, Washoe County, Carson City, Douglas, Minden, Fernley, Dayton, all of Northern Nevada uh, to a business community and somebody from outside of this area. They're not gonna distinguish necessarily, um, you know, say Sparks, from, from Reno. They're coming to look at Northern Nevada and I think we need to cooperate at that regional level. Um, I think we've done a very good job of it here, Reno, Sparks, Washoe County or the Truckee Meadows as a whole and I look forward to seeing us kind of spread that blanket out and include more of Northern Nevada. And then the, you know, the, the base tier, the closest to the, to the city and I think really coming, coming back to the quality of life, that is a local government duty. That's where I think you know, we do our best work and our most important work, is, is making sure that we have a well-planned community, a safe community, uh, a community that you can actually drive around in that's not you know, gridlocked so that you have a good transportation system, whether it's in your car or whether it's public transit, um, that, uh, that you have a customer service friendly attitude from the local government because we're, we're, we're gonna be close to that business. You know, the business might be brought in by the state with some tax incentives, but when they come in and set up and on to operate continually, 
It's the city of Sparks that they're going to deal with, whether it's through a fire inspection system or a business license renewal. That's, that's a basic relationship that we need to maintain with the business community in our city. Director Crew says it's critical for the community to attract new and relocating businesses. Business is a huge part of allowing the city to operate. It's businesses that generate the revenues, you know, that, that pay those higher property taxes through living in nice buildings, you know, having to construct facilities to do their business in. They're the ones that provide the revenues to the city so that we can work hard on that, on the quality of life issues that I've already addressed. People want to feel safe in their community and they, they certainly do that by seeing police officers, you know, by seeing crime rates that are relatively low. That all costs money and it's largely business that provides the money to drive that engine of the city. The business community is the one that, that sets the tone in the community, whether it's a vibrant business community, uh, you know, is it, is it active, is it wanting to see itself grow? I think there's the, the basis of economic development in any region. And I think the government plays a supporting role there. Um, coming back to that facilitative role that I spoke to earlier, where you know, we, we want to bring people to our community, and then I think a key part of doing that is helping them feel welcome and then running them through the processes, whether it's a, a simple building permit process or if they need some sort of land use entitlement, that we do that as friendly, as, as quickly as, as possible, um, really in a transparent and predictive way. Uh, you know, predictability I think is a huge thing for government. People ought to be able to walk in our front door and have a pretty darn good idea of what's going to happen next. Businesses look for cities where it is easy and attractive to conduct business. The key is a responsive, streamlined government. In responding to the economic condition that we've been in here for the last several years, we have consolidated you know, within the city, trying to live within that reality. Um, but one of the benefits that we are enjoying out of that is that we have what formerly were you know, the public works uh, duties uh, and the planning duties that existed separately are now co-joined. Uh, and so when somebody comes in and, and wants to start a new project here, you know, we can bring everybody to the table quickly, whether it's from the health department, whether it's from transportation, whether it's from sewage treatment. I know nobody likes to talk about that, but everybody flushes the toilet. Uh, so the ability to bring all of those people really under one umbrella very quickly is, uh, I think, the key thing for the city. So just what is the city's best asset in drawing new business? We are a safe place to live. We have a fantastic park system. Uh, we have a great recreation program. Um, and then inside of that, I think there's a mindset that we as the city staff uh, work very hard to carry forward, and that is a, a mindset that is open and I'll call it facilitative. Uh, the approach that we take is one of common goals. A business wants to come here and grow. We want to see our city grow and, and, flou and flourish so that uh, it, it makes Sparks an even nicer place for people to live, work, and play. Sparks is proud to announce the city's new website. The 24-hour virtual city hall is a hub of information on city events, recreation, dining, shopping, and more. The new website makes information easy to find for visitors with an I want to menu structure and it's happening here widget and easy interactive forms for residents and businesses. For residents who have business with City Hall, a click or two quickly accesses City Council agendas and minutes. You can view live and archived meetings online and watch broadcasts from Channel 215, the City of Sparks Government Channel. With its dual City Hall and visitor focus, the website can be reached through two URL addresses, cityofsparks.us or sparksitshappeninghere.com. It is even available in mobile editions, too. The new website was paid for by hotel room taxes. No city general fund dollars were used to pay for the website. Smart stewards of taxpayer dollars know staying out of the red means watching revenues. For Sparks, it also means going green to save green. The city and NV Energy are celebrating completion of a solar power project expected to reduce the city's annual power cost by as much as $60,000. As part of its sustainability action plan, the city has installed 300 kilowatts of solar power in the parking lot of the Sparks Police Department to generate energy and reduce the city's electricity cost. The first year savings we estimate to be about $60,000. Over the life of the system, we expect it to be somewhere between $1.5 and $2 million. 
NB Energy says a solar panel installation will produce about the same amount of energy in a year that 150 homes would consume in that same one year time. The cost of insulation will be partially offset by a $560,000 grant from the federal government's Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant and by three NB Energy rebates. The days of just slapping solar up on a roof are gone. Uh, our process includes a fairly detailed engineering analysis to determine what the right type of equipment uh, is to use at the location. That includes the solar panels and the inverters as well as with structures such as this, uh, putting up the shade structure, uh, making sure that we go through for the full engineering in the area. Um, and then it's a detailed uh, plan is developed. In this case, it included lighting to ensure that there's, under, there's lighting underneath all the all the locations uh, and the installation. So from a time standpoint, there's not a significant amount of time doing the actual construction, but the preparation for the project is fairly extensive. The solar panels are part of 18 months of work spanning several Sparks government sites. They include solar projects at two city fire stations and the Larry D. Johnson Community Center. For Chad Dickerson and his almost 50 co-workers at Hamilton Solar, the benefits are much more personal. This project was kind of a, the work with the City of Sparks is kind of a launching pad for our company. Uh, through the work with the City of Sparks, we were able to establish relationships with our manufacturers that helped us drive down the cost for solar in Northern Nevada. Uh, we see about a 25% lower cost of solar in Northern Nevada than we've seen historically in Las Vegas as an example. And we attribute that primarily to the relationship we've established with the City of Sparks. Uh, thanks to the partnership with the City of Sparks, uh, we are, uh, we've grown to be the largest installer in Northern Nevada. Uh, we're working currently with six different school districts and doing all the solar for those school districts, as well as some uh, solar over at the Reno Tahoe Airport, for, for example. To learn more about volunteering or economic development, click or call the City of Sparks. That's it for today's program of Spotlight on Sparks. I'm Adam Mayberry. Thanks for watching.